What is up, everybody? This is Eric for Rocket TV, and check it out. Today, we are looking at the brand new hero from the Assassin's Creed franchise from Ubisoft, whose name is Ezio, or Ezio, or it's a little bit difficult to pronounce. doesn't really matter. Anyways, we're going to be taking a look at him so you can see everything that you want to know about the new hero. We're also going to look at the brand new Awakening heroes that came out with this brand new patch, and we're going to go do some legendary events in action. So stay tuned. We have a little bit of a long episode, but I think it's going to be really fun, and I think you're going to enjoy it. So with enough of that, cue the transition. Back to get Ezio. By the way, uh, something for the background. I'm at my brother's house, so no green screen today. But such is life. Ezio, or Ezio, or Easy Kill? I don't know. But he's the Templar Scourge. And let's check him out. He is the new hero from Assassin's Creed franchise from Ubisoft. So let's go in here to Heroes and just look at what his skills do real quick. And then we'll level him up and see how he works in battle. So. Nope. Abilities. So his ultimate, Cold Vengeance. Ezio targets the weakest enemy launching an attack, which deals a large amount of physical damage and cannot be dodged. If he succeeds in killing the target, Ezio will throw a smoke bomb, which blind bomb, <laughs> which blinds nearby enemies, reducing their hit rate. Cool. Kill streak. Uh, strikes each enemy on the field at least once with a quick and deadly attack, dealing physical damage and stunning them. Wow. While carrying out these attacks, he is immune to all types of damage. Okay, <laughs> that seems pretty nuts. Uh, using his renowned stealth, every 12 seconds, Ezio is able to dodge a physical attack by which he normally would have been hit. He will also use throwing knives, which deal initial physical damage and damage over time. Right. And then Eagle Vision. Ezio activates his sixth sense, increasing his dodge rating. After successfully dodging, he will use his basic attack and kill streak more quickly. He will also gain 50 health every time he dodges. All right. So seems pretty powerful, not gonna lie. Uh, especially that striking everybody on the battlefield, uh, mumbo jumbo, and stunning them all. That is, uh, that's, that's a pretty good effect. That's a pretty good effect. We'll have to see. Uh, we'll also look where in the lineup he'll show up. Uh, we'll check that out. We'll see uh, what his rotation looks like and uh, see what kind of gear he needs. Hopefully we can get him up there pretty high. And hopefully we have enough gear to upgrade him. I always, I always worry <laughs> that we're gonna get into that purple plus one or something and not have, not have enough stuff. And you know what? It's burger time. It's burger time, Ezio. I think I'm gonna use you, so we'll just go right in here. Use a bunch of our burgers, you know. YOLO. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just said no. Uh, so I've been staying here for a claim this just in case. And then let's go right back to the heroes here. And go down to this friend and equip him up. And we'll see exactly what it takes to get him all uh, equipped up. And we'll check him out. And then at the end of the video, uh, we'll probably go do some Crucible of Fire if it's up today. I think it is. So, so you get your kill streak for your green seal, obviously. Okay, moving on. These are the easy levels, so nothing too crazy here. Uh, has anybody played Assassin's Creed, by the way? I am going to have to admit that I haven't played it, although I've watched other people play it, which is uh, maybe weird, but. I, I enjoy it. Some of my uh, best friends, my, my girlfriend has uh, an old childhood friend who actually lives right next to us, and they play Assassin's Creed all the time. So I'll go over there and watch them play every once in a while, but I don't run the game myself. All right, Legendary Stealth is his blue skill. But uh, looking forward to seeing how he plays. The short video that... The, that uh, that Lilith had up on their Facebook page did make the ult look pretty cool. Yep, fusion. Nice. Uh, so, I like that. I also like how it targets people with the least amount of HP. So, it uh, could potentially synergize really well with Slim. Or maybe just a replacement for Slim, depending on how you look at that, even though they do kind of fill different roles, but they both have execute style 
ultimates. All right, rolling on up. And we are at purple. And you know, we're just gonna keep on uh, equipping Ezio here until we're uh, not able to do it anymore. Because, you know, I think that's a good idea. Hopefully he doesn't require a ton of class to lives. I just used, I just used some of those on somebody else. Wow, we're missing capes? Really? Wow. Well, you know, such is life. <laughs> Seemingly the simple, simple items sometimes get you. All right. We'll probably get him up into uh, higher levels. Not, it won't take too long, but I'm not going to grind for a stealth cape on, on camera here. Yeah, you guys know that, that those are pretty easy to find. So at least we can look over here to purple plus two. Uh, Pride Protector here is going to take a uh, destroyer, I think they're called. Yeah, destruction. Uh, that's going to be an ancient royal sword and two gold mallets. Uh, Grim Slasher. It's just uh, nothing really except for the mask. Uh, same thing, just your uh, de two demonic long swords. Sapphire Bracelet, uh, you do finally have a Spartan Dagger at plus three, uh, two, no, three, actually. Three uh, natural remedies needed at purple plus three, so keep that in mind. <laughs> That's at the very least something to look out for. Uh, and here we have another Destruction, Ancient Royal Sword. So he doesn't look particularly cheap, but at the same time not uh, too formidable. So let's up his abilities here. Check out how they scale. Plus 10 damage. Uh, it does. Alright, so plus 10 damage. I'm not sure if that's over a flurry, because it looks like in the video that it was a bunch of attacks. So, uh, we'll see how that works out. And then on his kill streak, plus 10 damage. And then success rate increases on the stun. His legendary stealth deals base of 252 damage and 63 damage per second for 6 seconds. Okay. And uh, a little bit more damage on that uh, poison dart there. And then uh, increases dodge rating by 41 and then 1 for every level. Alright, so it'll be interesting to see uh, how much dodge rating he has baked into his items. Because he might be a, a pretty a pretty good physical defense hero if he has enough. If he doesn't, that's always bad, especially if he's low on the physical armor in total. So something to look out for. But let's go right into a fight and see how uh, how he works out here. Do, 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 do. Okay, we're going to go back just to make sure that he can have an impact here. Not, not quite that far back. Boom. Yeah. So, let's pull out the team here. Go down to Ezio, who is, I believe, a frontliner. Yes. So, just in case you wanted to see where he ends up in the front line, it looks like he's behind Riley, uh, or in front of Riley Ulfang. Uh, who else is he in front of? Gus. Uh, Tanya, Killjoy, uh, Hanzo. So it looks like he's in the mid to back of the front line. He's definitely not the very furthest back, but definitely not the one that's in front. Most of the people that you would consider tanks are going to be in front of him. The one surprising uh, pick that he's actually in front of at least so far, be Gus. You'd, I, I would assume that Gus would be in front of him. But let's just get right on in here. Party is not full. That is just fine. Let's see what his combination looks like. Oh, he's get, got that little backflip right after he attacks in the very beginning. And then here is the... Oh, cool. Yeah, so he's just jumping all around the battlefield. Uh, not getting much damage in there, but he's not really all that level that I'm really curious how his ultimate's gonna work out here and let's see the ultimate 
Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> okay, that is pretty cool. And it is true, there are a lot of attacks on that ultimate. So, that's something to look forward to. I am going to back out after one more use of this ultimate because it is pretty cool. Even if he was dodging. That actually did a pretty decent amount of damage to that guy who has a lot of physical armor. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to using Ezio. We'll see just exactly how well he turns out in the future. Uh, but stay tuned right now because we are going to actually look at a couple more things. Because not only did Ezio come out, but both Seraphine and Thera got their awakenings. So let's have a first look here at uh, Shimmering Glow, unlocked after Hero Awakening. Every time Seraphine deals damage, her magic attack will be increased. It can be increased up to 50 times per wave. All right, so she uh, just stacks magic damage. Wow, that could be devastating. Uh, it, it always depends on how it scales, but uh, that that's an attractive choice. That's an attractive choice if you want to go for Seraphine. And then let's go over and check out Thera here. Wormhole. She has a 20% chance of avoiding any type of damage below a certain limit. She will still take damage that exceeds the limit. All right. So it just gives her a little bit more survivability, which is something that Thera desperately needs, especially against people like... Uh, right now, she gets absolutely wrecked by Jasmine's ult in crucible or not crucible excuse me in arena she's really useful in arena i think but <coughs> pardon me but she just gets tore up by jasmine and docris so depending on how they take into factor the multiple hits uh that uh, are triggered by jasmine's ult if they count that as one attack or not uh, this might make her a very viable person so you know, such is life. I'm actually going to just drop. <laughs> I'm in the middle of Elric's Awakening quest, and you know, I don't, I don't really care about Elric's Awakening quest. Uh, I was, oh, did not need to do that. Sorry about that. Uh, I don't really care about Elric, so quit. <laughs> Confirm. Yeah, 44 pieces. Whatever. <laughs> Uh, I was just doing that to kill time until they brought out another awakening quest and I am so stoked for Seraphines. So let's check out what uh, stage you need to farm. It looks like, okay, that's really odd. She has physical crit rating. Hopefully they change that by the by. If uh, Will is watching, I'll make sure to send something to him because I'm guessing they wanted magic crit. Because that would be really weird. Anyways, so magic attack plus 200, magic pierce rating plus 50, max health plus 700. And you get the dove's feather in stage 14, uh, number one. So pretty, pretty early in stage 14. So if you've already done some of the awakening quests, you're probably uh, right there. Oh, hey, you're still in Richard. Not even that close to getting ooh, two pieces. Nice. Not even that close to getting my next, uh, or getting Vernos, so not terribly, terribly great that we got the traveling tree, but well, still, oh, three, nice, 41 out of 80, cool. All right, so let's uh, kind of, we'll just finish up here, do, do a couple more things. Let's uh, bop in, give a free Master Forge to Arachna. That's not a great Master Forge, but such is life. And you know what? Well, let's just make this a long episode. You know, if you're still watching, let's try out Legendary Vincent. I've uh, been wanting to try out Namtar on him, but was not able to. Or maybe I was. Yeah, maybe I was. I don't even know. I don't even know anymore, guys. So let's try the Agaric Bloodspear. And we always need Gizmo. All right. Let's see if this is able to do some work. Hopefully we can. Let's try it out. So, we still have Drago there to suck up all of the um, 
prisons that Vincent is going to lay down. And that's important. Namtar just can't deal with that. He would, uh, he would definitely die real quick. Real quick. If he were in prison. Since life leech is a pretty decent amount of his survivability. Okay, nice. And we get that. We'll wait on throwing out our ults until after he throws out his ult. Because I do not want to be... I will use those, though. That way. Oh, good thing I used... Uh, Blood Spears because he just ended up dying. <laughs> and we'll use Garrick's again. Hopefully, uh, I do not think Gizmo is definitely not going to live here. No, this is just going to be uh, death. But, oh well, at least uh, Namtar is going to do some work. No, he is not going to do any work. So that did not work out amazingly. Oh well. Number two, okay, and that was not a great attempt. Uh, you know, Amtar, I love you, you know I do, but I think we're gonna have to try this team right here, see how this works. Uh, Namtar, you're amazing, you're the best, everybody knows it, but, but we gotta try a team that might be able to pump out a little bit more damage here. This will be the last one, and then I'll let you guys go, because I know you just wanna watch every second. Right. <laughs> uh, but you'll have to let me know down in the comments what you think about Ezio. I think he's going to be a pretty darn good hero, just from the looks of it. it there, it's hard to imagine with that toolkit that he has, you know, especially being able to stun the whole enemy team, that he's not going to be useful. You know, it's just, it's hard to fathom. I'm going to have to throw out uh, Flora's ult early there just to try to uh, live through that his uh, big ol' ultimate. Hopefully Gizmo gets an ult off. I don't think he will. I think Vincent's gonna ult here and get us, yeah. <laughs> that did not work out so hot. We gotta tone down the damage a touch. You know what? I lied. We're gonna do one more. Uh, we gotta, we can't quite be doing so much so that he punks us real hard like that on the first, on the first. of his so let's get in here and swap it up a little bit although I'm having, I'm having a hard time picking who we should use you know what let's try Tanya let's try Tanya I like her I was using her really well against Hirok I wish I could have recorded it but was able to get I think it was 1.4 million which I've heard some people were able to get around 1.6 which is really awesome but uh, Tanya uh, really, really usable in Hirok if you have her. Just uh, heads up. So let's go in here. We'll use Blood Spears. Oh, we're definitely not doing nearly as much uh, upfront damage, which is probably a, a good thing. Although Tanya is soaking up the containment or the, his. Uh, yeah, that is. Uh, Tanya does not work. <laughs> Face pop. God, dude. Stop making so many, so many rookie mistakes. Tanya just jumps right in front of Drago. Not, not able to really do much off of that here. But you know, oh well. That's his life, and we're gonna not do that much, even though we slow rolled it. Still did not work out well. So, oh well. At least, uh, at least we did all right. We're at number two for now. Although that probably will not hold. Uh, a lot of the people that play this on this server are gonna get on later. Plus, I think there might have been a server merge, so uh, keep in mind that you might be facing some stiffer competition in anything that you might be doing on your own server. All right, well, I think that's gonna be it for me today. Uh, thank you so much for joining. You'll have to let me know down in the comments once again what you think of SEO and if you're going to be doing any of the new Awakening quests because I know I am super stoked for Seraphine. I'm going to try to get through that as quick as possible that you can see exactly what she's like. Anyways, uh, drop a like down there if you enjoyed the video. You can always subscribe for more Soul Hunters action. Uh, anyway, uh, anyways, 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 this has been Eric for Rocket TV. Thank you so much for joining me today. Until next time, I hope you have a great day. Peace.